Hey, Angular signals haven't had great support for asynchronous operations until now. Angular version 19, coming out next month, introduces a new experimental API called Resource and an RxJS interop API called RxResource. These features will revolutionize how we handle our HTTP requests. In this video, we take a first look at both Resource and RxResource and how you can leverage them in your projects. Use resource to request an asynchronous operation and get the result as a writable signal. This is especially useful for HTTP requests. Let's check out an example. I'm in StackBlitz looking at a bare bones project. We want to retrieve products when the component is initialized. I'll paste in the code to retrieve our products, which are Star Wars vehicles. If you normally use HTTP client, this may look a bit foreign. We'll walk through a more familiar approach in a moment. Here we construct a resource, passing in an object. That object has a loader function that defines the async operation. Notice that resource expects the async operation to return a promise with the result, hence the reason we use fetch here. When this resource is created, it issues the HTTP request. Hovering over products, we see that constructing a resource returns a resource ref. If, like me, you use HTTP client, consider using Rx resource instead. Rx resource is like resource, but it expects the async operation to return an observable instead of a promise. Let's comment out the resource and do the same async operation using Rx resource. First, we inject HTTP client. Then we define the resource products. This time we call Rx resource and again pass in an object. That object has a loader function where we define the async operation. Here we use an arrow function, call HTTP get of product response and pass in the URL. HTTP get returns an observable. Rx resource automatically subscribes to and unsubscribes from that observable. Sweet! The Rx resource only considers the first emission, similar to using the RxJS first value from operator. This works great with HTTP operations since they are one and done, meaning that they only emit once and complete. Okay, that looks great. But wait, there's more. And everything I'm covering in the remainder of this video works basically the same for resource and Rx resource. Hovering over products, we see that it's of type resource ref of product response. That's not a signal. How do we get the value of the HTTP response as a signal? A resource ref has properties such as loader status, error, and value that are signals. Let's define an effect and log out the resource status every time it changes. Because the status is a signal, we open the box to read that signal. And we do the same to log out the value every time it changes. Even though we have no template yet defined, our resource is created when the component is initialized. Open the browser console, and we first see a status of 2 and a value of undefined, then a status of 4 and our data. Drilling down, we see that the Star Wars API returns a set of metadata and an array of products. Cool! But those status numbers don't mean much. Luckily for us, they are defined in a resource status enum. Scrolling down, we can get the string name of the status using the enum name, like this. Now in the console, we first see the status of loading. Ah, that makes sense why our value is undefined. The async operation we defined in the loading function is still processing. Next, we see a status of resolved. Our async operation is finished, and we have the value of the response. Nice. I'll close the console. What if our HTTP request requires parameters? 
we use the optional first argument of the resource constructor to pass in parameters. Let's retrieve one product by its ID. First, we define a selected product ID signal, which is of type number or null. It's null until the user selects a product. We'll use this signal as our query parameter. Every time the signal changes, we want to retrieve the associated product. Then we declare a resource called product. We again use Rx resource, or we could use resource, passing in an object. Set the request function to an arrow function that returns a signal. In this case, it's our selected product ID signal. Then set the loader function. This time we'll pass in an object specifying our request. Let's alias that request to product ID for readability and we call HTTP GET with a generic parameter of product and pass in the URL with the required URL parameters. OK, what have we done? Whenever the selected product ID signal changes, this code will automatically retrieve the product with the specified ID. We have reactive async code. Cool! It's important to note that signals defined in the request are tracked for changes, but those referenced in the loader are not. If we reference signals in the loader function, changes to those signals will not cause the loader to re-execute. Only changes to the signals defined in the request cause the loader to re-execute. What if we have multiple query parameters? Let's add a signal for a product color. To specify multiple parameters, change the arrow function to return an object with a property for each query parameter. We'll define two, but you could use this technique to define any number of parameters. Let's name the first property ID for the selected product ID signal, then color for the color signal. In the loading function, remove the alias for the request. Lastly, modify the URL to include the additional query parameter. Now when either of the signals change, the resource will re-execute the loader function. Does that work? Let's display the product in a template. Scrolling up, I'll paste in some simplistic template code. When the user clicks a button, it calls an on-click event, passing in the ID of the product. If the product value signal is not null, we display the name and cost of the product. Scrolling down, I'll paste the onClick method. This method sets the ID from the button into the selected product ID signal. What does that do? Setting a new value into the selected product ID signal notifies the resource that the signal has changed and re-executes the loader function. Clicking on Speeder, we see the product name and cost. It works! Clicking on Starfighter, we see that product's name and price. In this case, the price is undefined. Let's update that. You may be wondering how Resource and Rx Resource are different from ToSignal, which issues an HTTP request and emits the result into a read-only signal. There are two key differences. First, we have the request property that makes it easy to reissue the HTTP request when one or more signals change, basically making our async operation reactive. Second, with resource and Rx resource, the resulting value is a writable signal. In the effect, let's change these signals from products to our product. Then hover over the value property. Notice that it is a writable signal of product or undefined. Scrolling up, let's add an update button to the template. Scrolling back down, add the onUpdate method. This code updates the product cost in credits. Because the resource value provides a writable signal, we can update the product value directly. Very nice! Now click the Starfighter button and click Update. The value is updated. We could post that update back to the server, but note that the resource documentation specifically states, resource is intended for read operations, not operations that perform mutations. Why? The documentation continues. 
Resource will cancel in-progress loads via the abort signal when destroyed or when a new request object becomes available, which could prematurely abort mutations. So don't use resource or Rx resource for put, post, or delete operations. Now let's open the browser console, navigate down, and we see the updated data. After the update, the status of the resource is local. That means the data has been updated locally. Note that if we update data while a request is in progress, that request is canceled and our update takes precedence. So, the resource and Rx resource APIs provide reactive async code. We can reactively respond to changes in one or more signals and get data using those signals as query parameters. We can read the response from an HTTP request as a writable signal, obtain the status of the request, see error information, cancel the request as required, and reload the request when needed. Use resource to request an async operation that returns a promise and get the result as a writable signal. Use Rx resource to request an async operation that returns an observable and get the result as a writable signal. These features will be experimental in Angular v19, coming out in November. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe!